When I lived in a small community, nestled in the mountains of West Virginia, I never thought at all I would experience something so traumatizing and unexplainable. This was back in 2005, when my two friends and I decided to take a drive through the maze of back roads in Ripley, West Virginia. We were roughly 35 minutes away from Point Pleasant, where the infamous Mothman sightings had taken place so many years ago. As we drove along the winding roads that night, we found ourselves surrounded by the eerie darkness of the McClintic Wildlife Preserve. The area in question is filled with old abandoned factories and TNT, giving off a very unsettling vibe. We were just chatting, trying to ignore the extremely uneasy atmosphere, when suddenly we had heard a loud thud on the roof of our truck. Startled, we looked around to see what could have caused it. That's when I saw something that nearly made my heart stop. An outline of a person gliding behind us at an incredible speed. Our truck was going nearly 70 miles an hour, yet this figure kept up with us effortlessly for nearly an entire mile. I couldn't believe it. Neither could my friends, who also witnessed this bizarre occurrence. We sped up even more in hopes of losing whatever was following us, but to no avail. The fear in our hearts grew as we realized there was no way this could be a human being or any known animal. As devoutly religious individuals, none of us had ever even dreamed of encountering something so strange and terrifying. Eventually, after what felt like hours must have been only minutes, the figure disappeared into the darkness without a trace. We finally made it out of the McClintic Wildlife Preserve and back onto more familiar roads. Shaken by our experience... And to this day, I could still recall every detail. It wasn't just some figment of our imagination or perhaps trickery by the shadows. All three of us know what we saw that night was very real. Though it's been years now, I never forget it. And while I may never find answers, I at least try to keep my mind open to different possibilities. My name is Abigail. I'm a 23-year-old college student. What I'm about to share with you is an experience that I've kept in for many years. One that my fellow girl guides and I will never forget. It was during the winter season of our senior year in high school. We would embark on a camping trip as part of our girl guide activities. Little did we know... This seemingly innocent adventure would turn into something far more terrifying. We arrived at campground late in the afternoon. This is already after driving hours through snow-covered roads. To our surprise, we found that we were the only ones there. Not another soul in sight. This should have been our first warning sign, but being young and excited for a weekend away from home... We simply brushed it off as just an opportunity to bond without distractions. As night fell upon us, temperatures dropped significantly. However, this didn't dampen our spirits as we huddled around the campfire telling stories and roasting marshmallows. The darkness enveloping us seemed almost comforting at first until strange noises began echoing through the trees surrounding our campsite. At first, these sounds resembled fox barking or perhaps coyotes howling in the distance, nothing too alarming for seasoned campers. But as time went on, they grew louder and closer to where we were situated, approximately three miles east of the campground entrance. The atmosphere within our group shifted from happy 
to tense. Unease would settle over each of us like a heavy, thick blanket. We tried to reassure one another by rationalizing what could be making such eerie noises so close to us. But deep down inside, none of us truly believed any explanation offered up. Around midnight, most of my fellow girl guides had retreated into their tents, seeking warmth and comfort against both cold air outside and the events unfolding. As one of two designated Night Watch members, I remained awake by the dying embers of our fire pit, alongside my best friend at the time, Emily. 4 a.m. rolls around, and the darkness seems to be at its thickest. I decided then to take a walk around the perimeter of our campsite, my flashlight in hand. Now, my intention was to make sure everything was secure, and that no wild animals had ventured too close while we slept. I made my way towards the tree line bordering our site, and something grabbed my attention. What I saw was a pair of glowing yellow orbs staring back at me, just within the tree line. I froze in place, fear gripping every fiber of my being. The eyes did not belong to your typical animal. They did not belong to a deer, a person, or a bear. They belonged to an enormous creature standing just beyond where the light met shadow. The eyes were easily nine feet up, surrounded by black hair, the gaze continuously borne to mine with an intensity that could shake your very soul. It felt like this thing could see straight through me into depths even I didn't know existed within myself. Without breaking eye contact or making any sudden movements, I slowly and cautiously backed away from whatever stood before me until reaching safety behind one of our tents, where Emily waited anxiously for news on what caused such terror-stricken expression upon my face. As soon as she saw those same yellow eyes peering out from amongst trees surrounding us, her own face drained of color instantly. She knew then that something was nearby that wasn't normal. Neither one of us have ever dealt with something like that. We watched together as whatever this figure was began moving southeast from an area up into a flat open hill leading further away but still very much visible due to the moonlight reflecting off the snow-covered ground, plus the occasional beam emitted by our handheld flashlights, now clutching tightly against our chest. We could see it. It was pretty big, but we never saw any other details. It vanished, going into the tree line, up on top the ridge. After it disappeared, it left nothing more than an eerie silence. The rest of our group had been roused by the commotion and fear in our voices. They emerged to find that nothing had happened. We didn't have the stomach to mention it. But we just told them we saw a really large deer, and everybody pretty much went back to bed. Her and I spent the remainder of that long night wide awake, far too afraid to sleep or even venture outside our tents. The next morning, we hastily packed up camp and left without ever looking back, all eager to put as much distance between ourselves and whatever it was that we had saw last night during those terrifying hours before dawn. Now, it's been years since that unforgettable winter camping trip. I've often wondered about it, thinking that maybe we encountered a yeti or perhaps something else entirely. What do you think? My name is Ron. I'm a successful entrepreneur with a background in finance. My business partner, Dave, has extensive experience in security. We've been friends for many years now, and it's often we travel together for work-related conferences or meetings. One spring evening, back in 2008, 
stands out as one of the most bizarre experiences I've ever had. We were returning to our condominium at the Ritz-Carlton in Chicago. This was after attending an important meeting with potential investors. It was a little after 10 p.m. We decided to take a walk along the magnificent mile before heading back to our condo. As we strolled down Michigan Avenue, admiring the beautiful architecture of city life, neither of us could have imagined what was to happen. Because as we turned onto East Pearson Street towards our building, both Dave and I noticed something strange flying around the corner of a nearby high-rise apartment complex. At first glance, it appeared to be an enormous bird. But upon closer inspection, it became clear that this being was unlike anything either of us have ever seen before. Its wings were membrane-like, similar to those of a bat, but much larger than any bat species known to exist. Its body seemed almost human-like in shape, although its head was distinctly reptilian, with an elongated cone-like structure on top, giving it an eerie appearance. Dave and I exchanged glances as we watched this bizarre bat swoop through the air above us, seemingly unaware or uninterested in our presence below. Despite my background in reality and finance and Dave's expertise in things security-related, neither one of us could come up with any logical explanation for what we were watching. Feeling unnerved by this unexpected account, we quickly made our way into the lobby of the Ritz-Carlton, where we exchanged another glance before passing by the night manager slash security guard who seemed to be completely oblivious as to what was happening outside. Once inside the elevator en route to our condo, I asked Dave what he thought the creature could have been. He shook his head and said he had no idea. But it was clear from the look in his eyes that this experience had shaken him just as much as it had me. For many years afterward, neither of us spoke about that night or the strange man bat we encountered on East Pearson Street. It wasn't until recently when I stumbled upon an online forum discussing similar sightings around Chicago that I decided to share our story with others who might have experienced something similar. Upon further investigation, I discovered numerous reports of encounters with the mysterious flying humanoid all throughout Chicago spanning the last several decades. Some witnesses describe seeing a large bat-like human with glowing eyes. Others reported encountering a more being akin to a pterosaur or even a dragon. These sightings have occurred at various times and locations across Chicago, from downtown skyscrapers to suburban parks and wooded areas near Lake Michigan. In some cases, Multiple eyewitnesses corroborated each other's accounts. However, no concrete evidence has ever been found to prove the existence of such creatures beyond these anecdotal stories. Now, as Dave and I delved deeper into this enigma, we began to wonder if there might be some truth behind some of these fantastical tales. Could there really be an undiscovered species of giant bats or perhaps prehistoric reptiles living among us. Or perhaps these creatures are not flesh-and-blood animals at all, but rather from another plane of existence. While we may never know for certain, one thing is clear. Curiosity drives us forward in search of answers where logic and reason fail. Our encounter remains one of the most puzzling unsolved mysteries in our personal lives. It serves as a reminder of how little we truly understand. I've always considered myself an avid outdoors enthusiast. Growing up in a small town surrounded by tons of woods and mountains, you kind of get bit by the hiking bug. In fact, 
my family would often spend weekend upon weekend just camping and hiking or exploring the wilderness, especially in the spring, summer, and fall, but sometimes winter, depending on the weather. In fact, my father taught me pretty much everything he knew about surviving in the wild, things like how to build a fire from scratch, being able to identify edible plants, even track game, you name it. My brother James, on the other hand, well, he wasn't as interested in these outdoor pursuits as I was. He preferred staying indoors with his video games and comic books. But every once in a while, we'd be successful to manage to drag him out along one of our adventures. Now that you know a bit about us, let me tell you about this particular camping trip that took place when I was 16. It started like any other weekend. My dad had found a new spot for us to explore during one of his solo hikes earlier that year. A secluded clearing within the forest where we could set up camp without ever being disturbed by other people or potentially wildlife. We would arrive at our destination late Friday afternoon this was after driving for hours through winding dirt roads and navigating steep inclines. The sun was already beginning to dip below the horizon. We unloaded our gear from the truck and began setting up camp. A few hours into our stay at this remote location, something strange happened. We heard an eerie moan echoing through the trees around us. It sounded mournful and deep, like it came from a person, but none of us could quite put our finger on who or what sort of animal would make such a noise. At first, we assumed there might be another camper nearby, maybe one who had lost their dog or perhaps was trying to play a prank on us. Though, considering how far off the beaten path we were, seemed highly unlikely. As time went on and darkness decided to fall over the forest like thick velvet curtains, the noise continued. It seemed to move down the hill and back again, as if whatever was making it was searching for something or someone. My father and I decided that we should take a look around with our flashlights, just in case there really was an animal in distress nearby. That's when we split up. My dad went one way, while I went further up the hill where the sound seemed to be coming from. But despite our best efforts, neither of us could find anything out of the ordinary. There were no signs of other campers or any indication that an animal had even been through recently. Meanwhile, James had stayed behind at camp. He wasn't interested in investigating further, and would later admit to me that he did not remember much about what had happened. He'd been so engrossed in his book by flashlight. My father remained intrigued, but not scared like me. After all, strange noises are part and parcel when you are camping deep within nature's embrace. The moaning continued until bedtime. We finally crawled into our sleeping bags inside the tent we shared as a family. It must have been around 3.45 in the morning. I woke up suddenly from a restless sleep, startled by yet another mournful wail echoing through the trees outside. I yelled out to my father, who lay snoring softly beside me. Dad, do you hear that? But there was no response. Either he had not heard me over his own snoring or simply chose not to acknowledge this latest disturbance. With nothing else left to do but to try and get some rest before morning, I eventually drifted off into uneasy slumber myself, never hearing another peep from whatever thing was out there that night. The next morning, we awoke to the sound of birds chirping and sunlight filtering through. It was as if the strange events from the night before had never happened, and whatever uneasiness that was stirred up in the forest was now met with calm. My father stirred first, 
rubbing his eyes and yawning before sitting up. Did you hear that noise again last night? I had asked him hesitantly, not wanting to be the only one who remembered what had transpired. He looked at me thoughtfully for a moment before replying. Yes, I did, but it's gone now, whatever it was. We went about our usual camping routine, preparing breakfast over an open fire, washing dishes in a nearby stream, and packing up our gear for another day of hiking and exploring. James seemed completely oblivious to what had occurred. He happily munched on his granola bar while chatting animatedly about his latest comic book obsession. As we set off deeper into the woods, I couldn't help but feel uneasy with each step I took. The memory of those moans lingered in my mind. It was like an unwelcome guest refusing to leave long after their welcome had worn thin. Despite my lingering fear, we enjoyed a beautiful day out in nature, discovering hidden waterfalls tucked away behind moss-covered boulders, stumbling upon breathtaking vistas where rolling hills stretched out as far as the eye could see. It wasn't until later that evening, when we returned to camp, that things took another bizarre turn. This time, there were footprints surrounding our tent. Large ones, unlike any animal tracks either my father or I had ever seen before. The prints were deep set into the soft earth around us, like whoever made them weighed considerably more than your average person. They led off into the woods toward where we'd heard those mournful wails emanating just the night before. My father and I exchanged worried glances, but neither of us wanted to alarm James, who remained blissfully unaware of the strange occurrences happening. We decided not to mention our discovery, at least not until we had a better idea of exactly what we're dealing with here. That night, as darkness once again came around our campsite, we huddled together in the tent, listening intently for any sign that whatever it was that had left those footprints might possibly return. But nothing happened. No mournful wails echoed through the trees, nor did anything disturb our slumber this time around. The following morning, we packed up, headed back towards civilization, each of us lost in thought about what might have transpired during our stay deep within nature's embrace. It wasn't until years later when I saw similar reports online describing similar noises, roughly in a 100-mile radius. I realized maybe what we experienced isn't so uncommon. It was around October 25th, 2015, and my father had just finished his night shift at the steel mill. He worked long hours, often coming home late in the evening or early morning hours. That particular night, he left work feeling exhausted but otherwise normal. As he drove down the familiar roads towards our house, something grabbed his attention for, you see, in the middle of the road ahead of him was something large and appeared to be crouched low to the ground. My father, curious, slowed down as he approached it, trying to make sense of what he was seeing, thinking that maybe it was an elk or something. But whatever it was turned to face him, and that's when it revealed two bright glowing eyes. They almost pierced through the darkness like headlights on a car. He noticed something else, that it had massive wings folded behind its back, making it appear even larger than it already was. Now, the body itself looked human, but appeared to be covered in dark clumps of fur, he described, or even feathers, but my father couldn't quite tell which. Now, this is when his heart began racing as he recalls fear gripping him, because he didn't know what this thing was or why it was there. 
every instinct told him that it wasn't safe to even be near it. So he just slowly passed by it, those same two eerie yellow eyes following his car intently until disappearing entirely from his rearview mirror. When my dad arrived home, he just sat there in his car for several moments before working up enough courage to go out and go inside. He feared that whatever it was could have followed him home or somehow tried to get near his vehicle without him ever noticing. Once inside, I remember, he locked all the doors securely and he had tried to process what had happened on his drive home. Now, it wasn't until later when talking with friends about what he'd seen that a few of his friends mentioned Mothman, a mysterious winged creature known for appearing during times of tragedy or disaster. It was during this time of the encounter, my father wasn't even aware of Mothman. Now, my dad has always been skeptical, especially about things like aliens or UFOs or ghosts. And of course, he had his own firsthand account. With something he couldn't explain, his perspective forever changed. He was certain that what he saw that night wasn't just some ordinary animal or even a trick of the light. It was something different. Something that did not belong. There's also this pervasive belief among those who have seen Mothman that witnessing this creature is like an omen of bad things to come. This notion alone only added to my father's anxiety in the days and weeks following his encounter. Every time there was a car accident nearby or news of another tragedy on TV, he couldn't help but wonder if seeing Mothman had somehow marked him for misfortune. As time went on, life continued as normal and no further disasters befell our family. My dad still talks about his experience with Mothman from time to time, or what he believes to be Mothman, always emphasizing just how real it was. Now, while I won't ever exactly know what he saw or why it appeared before him and not other people, encountering such a thing has left a mark on both him and us, because after that night, it changed his personality. Before I get to my story, let me first give you some backstory on me. You see, I've always been a bit of a skeptic when it comes to the paranormal. I like to consider myself a very logical individual who likes to look for the rational explanations for strange occurrences of all kinds. However, what happened to us on the night of April 14th and into the early morning hours of April 15th, 2020, has left me questioning everything that I thought I knew about the life we live. My colleague and I were driving back from a late night work meeting in Wilmington. We had taken this route countless times before, but never at such a late hour. The road wasn't completely dark. It was actually dimly lit as we drove along the stretch close to the Delaware River. There wasn't much traffic around since it was well past midnight. As we continued our journey towards Newark, something caught our attention out of nowhere. On the side of the highway stood what appeared to be an enormous black figure that seemed to nearly appear out of thin air. It towered over us at about eight feet tall and was so close that if their window had been open, we could have easily touched it. The moment we saw this figure, an eerie feeling washed over both of us. But despite feeling only coldness from his presence, we decided not to stop and instead keep driving with a heightened sense of awareness. We tried to make sense of what we had just witnessed while continuing our drive, but upon reaching the bridge that would take us across state lines, we discovered that it was actually shut down due to maintenance works being carried out overnight. With no other option available at that time of night, except turning back towards Bear, where my colleague lived nearby, which meant passing by where we'd seen this figure earlier, 
a figure that had seemed to just materialize out of nowhere. Apprehension began filling our minds as we retraced our way along the dark road. To make matters worse during our return trip near Bear, after driven several miles away from where we had initially encountered the strange thing, we suddenly caught sight of what appeared to be the same figure coasting over the street and darting between trees. And this time around, we got a better look at its features. The peak of its head was lustrous and black with almost an otherworldly sheen. Its body seemed to defy any known human anatomy. It was clear that whatever this thing was, well, it wasn't human. Its presence alone terrified me. But instead of stopping or trying to confront it, which is something only a madman would do. August 1st, 2021, marks one of the strangest trips I've ever had near Boulder, Colorado. Something which none of us will forget. Now, before I tell you this really long story, let me tell you a bit about myself and my family. I've been going in the great outdoors since I was young, and I've always enjoyed camping trips to various national parks. It's somewhat of a tradition. Now that I'm married and have children, my husband Tom and I are eager to pass on our love for nature by taking our children on these adventures with us as well. My kids are Jack and Lily, and they also share our enthusiasm. Now, on to the day in question. We had decided to visit Lower Mill Pond. We had heard from friends just how beautiful it was. The area was teeming with wildlife and a serene pond that made it the perfect spot for a getaway. As we arrived, we were immediately captivated. The shallow creek meandering through the landscape provided a peaceful soundtrack to our exploration we decided to set up camp near the water, hoping that its proximity would allow us to better observe the animals that call this place home. Shortly after settling in, we spotted a bull moose and two young ones grazing along the banks of the creek. We watched in awe as they moved gracefully through the water, nibbling on aquatic plants while keeping a watchful eye on their surroundings. I didn't know that bull moose were actually in this part of Colorado. Maybe I'm wrong. The sighting of these magnificent creatures had already made our trip worthwhile. Now as evening approached, Jack and Lily were ecstatic and had forced it on us that they were going to explore without our permission. Me and Tom reluctantly said yes, and they went about looking for anything. Within 20 minutes... They were calling us over on a dry creek bed. They had stumbled upon something truly bizarre. Several large three-toed prints had been left there in the earth. Tracks that resembled a dinosaur. Well, similar to our size of feet or a large bird. As an outdoor enthusiast, Tom and I had seen our share of tracks, but nothing like these. Feeling both fascinated and unnerved by this, we decided to look further. Jack and Lily led us back to where they first noticed the prints. Tom then carefully studied them while I documented their measurements. It was fascinating. The tracks went deeper into the woods as dusk turned into nightfall. With each step we took eastward towards the tree line that we seemed to get a feeling that we were being watched by unseen eyes, perhaps belonging to whatever had made these odd footprints. But we weren't really scared. It was just weird. As if on cue, piercing, screeching noises were echoing through the trees from several directions at once. These cries were chilling, and unlike anything we had heard, they made the hairs on the backs of our necks stand on end. Reluctantly, we decided it was best to return to our campsite for safety reasons. We sat around the campfire that evening. We couldn't help but discuss what we had experienced, 
Was there a connection between those tracks and the eerie screeching? Could they have been made by an unknown species native to these woods? Or perhaps even something far more strange? The night wore on, and we soon found ourselves in our sleeping bags trying to shake off the day's events. However, sleep did not come easy that night. From our campsite on the west ridge of mountains, were suddenly jolted awake by what sounded like a large pine tree being violently shaken back and forth. The force of this commotion was enough to send tremors to the ground beneath us. We all emerged from our shelter, peering into the darkness. Whatever had caused that disturbance was undoubtedly powerful. But just what was it? We were scanning the surrounding landscape for any signs of movement or unusual activity. I remembered a similar incident from years past. It was during another family camping trip near Trout Lake in Washington. We had heard an unexplained loud thud coming from deep within those woods one evening. Some folks around us suggested it might have been caused by a Bigfoot. Could there be a connection between these two incidents? Were they simply cases of wild animals behaving unusually, or evidence of something much more elusive? Well, I told this story to one of my best friends, and she told me that her and her husband had a really weird experience up in the same area. It was a few years back, and they had decided to do an impromptu weekend camping trip. They were eager to explore and just get away and have some quality time together. Life at home, I guess, was getting very stressful. The first day of their trip went smoothly. They hiked through some of the trails and checked out some of the surrounding vistas. As night fell, they returned to their campsite, feeling tired but excited. That night, they heard strange sounds around them. Karen recalled, my friend, how she was awoken by eerie tapping noises outside their tent. At first, she dismissed it as just another critter, possibly foraging for food. However, the tapping persisted and seemed to grow louder, and she couldn't shake off the nagging feeling that it was something else entirely. Gently, she nudged Dave awake and whispered her concerns. Now he too became increasingly uneasy as he began listening in. The sounds were coming from just outside their tent. With caution and trepidation, Dave unzipped the tent flap ever so slightly to take a peek outside, hoping it would reveal nothing more than maybe a curious raccoon or a possum or some other harmless woodland critter. But what he saw left him dumbstruck. There stood an impossibly tall figure, green and scaly and hideous. Dave claimed that it reminded him of a serpent, or serpent-like. He quickly fled back in the tent, zipped the tent up, and sat there as the tapping continued. The couple remained in their tent paralyzed as they listened to these unnerving noises continue for probably another couple hours. Eventually, the sounds ceased and faded off into the distance. They could no longer sense the presence of whatever this was. They were very shaken by this and decided to cut the rest of their trip short. They had never really spoken about what happened until, of course, I told her my story, which prompted her to open up and tell me her story. I'm not a biology expert, but... There's something really freaking weird going on around there. I've always felt like a bit of an outdoorsman. Growing up in the beautiful state of California, it's hard not to be drawn to the natural wonders that surround you. Towering redwoods in the north to the sun-kissed beaches in the south. There is really no shortage of variety of landscapes for one to explore. But... My favorite place has always been Forest Hill, located near Auburn. There's just something about this area that really calls out to me. 
Perhaps it's the dense foliage or the never-ending forest. This is where I've had many memorable adventures as a young man. Now, let me tell you about what happened on October 2nd. My friends and I decided we needed a break from our daily routines. We considered a day trip to Forest Hill. This was going to be a blast. So off we went. Four souls eager for adventure and excitement. As we made our way along one of our favorite trails, we stumbled upon something strange on the ground. At first glance, it appeared to be nothing more than a large branch, but upon closer inspection, its shape seemed rather odd, almost like an elongated foot with strange toe patterns. Curiosity peaked. We decided to move this bizarre object into the water nearby before continuing onward with our hike. We pressed forward until eventually reaching a dead end within the trail. Disappointed but undeterred, we began retracing our steps back towards where we had started earlier in the day. It wasn't long before things got weird. As we're making our way back through, now bathed in shadows cast by the late afternoon sunlight, off in the distance ahead of us, we all saw something. A dark figure moving and making strange noises. The sight of this stopped us all in our tracks. We were nervous. Was it a bear? Or so that's what I was thinking. We decided to approach cautiously, but as we drew closer, the figure seemed to vanish into thin air, leaving behind a silence broken occasionally by those strange sounds we had heard earlier echoing through the forest around us. We were very disturbed by this, not knowing exactly what we had just saw, since nothing we know vanishes into thin air. My friends and I resolved to return later, armed with a gun, just in case it was a person. When we returned to the scene, after arming ourselves, we began examining the ground more closely, where the dark figure had been spotted previously. We didn't really find anything, except, to our astonishment, we found what appeared to be footprints from something unknown. Now this was right by the trail side, and was at least 15 to 16 inches, a very unusual foot and toe pattern and deep indentation. These prints were unlike anything we'd ever seen, massive in size, and quite human in shape. However, the biggest thing that set them apart is that unless there is a giant basketball player walking around in the woods, I really doubt what we encountered was human. I grew up in a small town surrounded by lots of forest, so my free time was most often spent with friends in the wild. I am obsessed with camping and hiking. Now, two weeks ago, just like any other weekend for me, except this one would be special because I had planned a long hike through the Conifer State Park with my girlfriend Amy. We were looking to move past the busyness of everyday life and get some fresh air out in nature. And what a perfect place to do it than this perfect park. I can remember we woke up early that morning, loaded with excitement, threw our gear into the car, and set our way on our journey towards Conifer State Park. We got to the trailhead at around 10 in the morning, and we noticed quite a few other cars parked already. It indicated there might be some crowds along certain trails within the park. Being seasoned hikers ourselves, who enjoy more solitary adventures away from others, it meant finding less crowded routes. We were not going to be deterred. After consulting the park map and doing some quick research on our phones, we decided to take a lesser-known trail that would lead uphill along a beautiful creek. It seemed to be the perfect option for us. I mean, not only would it offer solitude, but also an opportunity to enjoy the soothing sounds of running water. 
My girlfriend and I were really into nature sounds, so this worked perfect. As we began our ascent up this peaceful path, surrounded by lush greenery and towering trees overhead, we noticed that at points the canopy was so thick that sunlight could barely reach below. Time seemed to pass quickly without either one of us noticing just how far or how long we had been hiking. Soon enough, though, roughly an hour into our journey, Amy noticed a spot on this particular route, a rocky outcropping overlooking part of where Creek met with another stream, creating almost like a natural amphitheater, if viewed from above. This was going to be interesting. With renewed excitement in both our strides, knowing now that such incredible sights awaited just around the bend, we moved very quickly, climbing steadily towards the summit along this winding pathway. We suddenly heard two distinct noises coming from the same direction. Very strange, considering how quiet and serene it had been up until this point. The first noise we heard resembled a very low growl, deep and guttural. Almost immediately afterwards, a second sound emerged. A loud, what I would describe as a whoop noise, unlike anything either of us had ever encountered in nature before. Now, understandably, we were intrigued by these noises, and also terrified. Amy and I were very puzzled, we tried to determine what animal could have made them, especially since no one seemed particularly animalistic or even human-like at all in origin. Just then, as we're still contemplating the source of these noises, a mountain biker wearing headphones suddenly appeared on the trail, going right past us. He seemed completely oblivious to our presence or even those bizarre sounds that had just occurred moments earlier which only added further intrigue to this already perplexing situation. With our curiosity now piqued, Amy and I decided it was time for some amateur exploring and an attempt to uncover what might have produced such unusual auditory phenomena out here, deep within Conifer State Park. We tried to get closer, but something kept us, if that makes sense. What I can only describe as some otherworldly, external force kept us from pursuing anything more. It's like, internally, we just felt dread about it. Even though we wanted to, we just couldn't physically bring ourselves to look further. I understand this probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but Amy and I both felt it. The best way I can describe it is as we were trying to move in the direction that we heard it. We would just become overcome with guilt and dread and fear. Like if we went further, something really bad was going to happen. And by this point, it was seriously weirding me out. I can recall grabbing Amy's arm and pulling her aside, saying, We gotta go now. This doesn't feel right. She agreed and went right along with me, not wasting a second. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it was ghosts in the woods or that it was a skinwalker or wendigo because I simply don't know. But what I can tell you is that I wholeheartedly believe it was unnatural. I still remember that summer as if it were only yesterday. The mountains we were in has always been a place of wonder. There are many legends around the small town of a white lady that floats above the road during late August and September. It's a place where people talk about supernatural encounters with Bigfoot and UFOs and other strange sightings. But never in my wildest dreams did I think I would become one of those storytellers. The camp where my family and I stayed was nestled between two small hills in the mountains. This formed a lake-like area that collected mist from fog and rain. Now, this unique geographical feature led to the development of an uncommon alpine bog habitat. Due to its rarity, 
the area was safeguarded by an ecological easement to protect it from any harm or disturbances. That summer seemed different than any other I had spent there before. There was an eeriness in the air, as if something dark was at work. A lot of people were talking about how they kept seeing strange apparitions all around the mountains, especially around the borders of the marshlands, along with stories of black dog apparitions and even military incidents occurring within close proximity. Being curious, I couldn't resist getting to the bottom of these, exploring and trying to find answers. As night fell on our first evening at camp, I decided I would venture out alone into the dark expanse. Fortunately, the moon gave way to enough light that its silver light shimmered across the wet marshland. With each step forward, I could feel fear in my body, knowing what was to come. It wasn't long before I reached the edge of the alpine bog, where others claimed they too have seen strange phenomena taking place. A plethora of UFO sightings and encounters have happened here, specifically one abduction story from a close family friend. Now at first glance, everything appeared relatively normal. Everything was ordinary. But as I stood there watching more intently, I swear what I saw, small glowing orbs began to appear on the fringes of my peripheral vision. These what I'll call will-o'-wisp balls of light, seemed to dance and sway around me, drawing me further into the bog. As I cautiously followed these ethereal orbs deeper into the marshland, I couldn't help but notice the atmosphere had suddenly changed. It became colder, more oppressive, and thick and heavy, as if charged with some kind of energy. It was then that I encountered my first black dog apparition, or, as some refer to it as, a hellhound. This large hound-like creature seemed to materialize right in front of me. Its fur was even shimmering in a very unnatural glow against the moonlight. It stared in my direction intently, as if trying to come across as dark and evil. The sheer size and presence was enough to make my heart nearly drop. As I stood there, physically unable to move or to speak or do anything, this low rumbling sound began echoing through the trees around me. Several men, or apparitions of men, appeared. They looked like military personnel in camouflage. They moved silently past me, continuing on their mission without acknowledging my presence. I couldn't understand what I was witnessing. Were these ghosts, or perhaps they were soldiers, participating in some covert training exercise? Regardless of their purpose or origin, it was clear that something supernatural was happening. I was pretty sure they were all apparitions. They all seemed to just kind of fade out into the night dematerialized right in front of me. I slowly began making my way back towards camp, completely terrified out of my mind. I now had no desire to look. I found it. As I walked away, one last strange sight caught my attention. High above on one of the hills surrounding our campsite was this white flowing apparition I think what a lot of people around here called the White Lady. It just kind of floated there gracefully like a cloud, like a spectator from another realm. Its ethereal form was very undefined and luminescent. After all of this, I stayed out of the woods exploring for quite some time. Now, it's just a story I can pass on. What are your thoughts and opinions on what I experienced?